Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. We're going through the steps on how to install the Plex Media Server onto your Netgear Ready NAS. So we're doing this demonstration on a 314 Ready NAS. Your version may be different, but the steps are fairly similar across the, the Ready NAS range. So brief overview of what Plex is. Plex is uh, it's, a, it's an app. It's a server app that you can manage all of your media, your movies, your TV shows, your family videos, those sort of things into a single repository location. Uh, you can download the artwork automatically. It'll go and fetch the artwork, the description of all, your, all, of, of all of your movies and TV shows, for example. It'll group them into, into nice categories. It'll show you things that are watched, things that are unwatched. And the great thing is that the Plex app is available across multiple devices, including the, the newer Apple TVs, your iPhone, iPads, your Macs, your Windows computers, those sort of things. Uh, you can actually download the Plex app, so you can actually go and play that on multiple devices and stream all your media very, very easily. So, as I said, uh, Nekia ReadyNAS is where we're gonna be installing it. So the first thing you wanna do is log in to your ReadyNAS. Um, log in as you would normally via your IP address and you'll be presented with this sort of a window or similar. And then you wanna click on the apps area. Now it will show you the installed apps that you have as well as available apps. So this is similar to say like an app store. This is a store where you can go and just install apps straight from the internet that will run on your ready nose. So what we're going to want to do is scroll down until we find one called Plex. And there it is, Plex Media Server. All right. So we want to go ahead and install this. As it says, it may take a little bit of time to install it. So let's just uh, have a look at that. So once that's installed, if you navigate to the installed apps, you'll see that your Plex media server is installed by default. Okay, so Plex organizes all of your personal media so you can easily access and enjoy it. You can get some more information. You can also remove the app from here and you can turn the app on and off as well so that you can actually uh, disable the server when you don't need it, for example. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and launch it. What that's gonna do, that'll open up a new window or a new tab on your browser, and that will go ahead and give you some options to start setting it up, all right? All right, so we're presented with our first screen right here. If we go into status, shows you the name, etc. There's nothing really going on right yet. Settings. It's all pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? It says currently that there's an install that's awaiting to be uh, installed. But you got great things like you can set multiple users to log in to Plex as well. I've just got the one user in there. Your devices, all right? So you can actually add a whole bunch of things in there as well and add a library. So this is what we're gonna to wanna to do to start configuring our Plex um, so that you can start recognizing all of your media. All right, now what we've got is if I look in my finder, the first thing that you would need to do is set up a folder somewhere on your computer. It could be on a NAS, it could be on some external hard drive, a USB drive, or it could be on your uh, on your desktop, for example, on your computer. And you can go ahead and create all the folders that you want to be added into Plex. So in my case, I've got TV shows, music DVDs, movies, home movies, home videos, family videos, documentaries, etc. So these are the categories that I'm going to have uh, different sorts of video, different sorts of media added. And then when we're in Plex, you can go ahead and then create the libraries within Plex, all right? So first thing would be to create a directory for, for your Plex media, wherever that may be. Uh, create all your folders and dump all your stuff into the necessary folders. Now, one thing you wanna be mindful of is in the movie section, you can just dump your movies as is and it's pretty smart at picking it up. TV shows, if we look in here, so I've got some TV shows in here. Um, create them based on the name of the TV show, right? If I look at Seinfeld and then create the season likewise, and then you have to name it accordingly. So episode one, season one, for example. 
Uh, otherwise, it can get a little bit confused as to what media to download, especially for your TV show. So just keep that in mind. You have to have a good naming convention and a good folder structure to be able to get that information um, from the internet and download all your artwork and, and sort it very nicely for you. So back in here, what we want to do is the first thing we'll do is we'll create a movies library. What do you want to call it? Now, this is the name we want to call it within Plex. We want to call it movies. Next. Now, it's going to ask you to browse for your media folder. So this is the folder that we were just looking at, but the movies one is the first one we're going to create. So browse for media folder. I know that it's in my NAS. It's in my Plex folder and it's in my movies folder. So you'll see the path up here. Add. That has now added that path into movies. So whatever's sitting inside this movies folder in this directory, it's going to add it into the movies library in Plex. So we're going to say add library. So that is now going to start creating the movie library. And as you can see, it's already started downloading some stuff, which is fantastic. It'll now go and search for all that stuff on the internet and um, you know go from there, which is really cool. So back to where we were. Plus, up here next to library, we'll create another one. We'll create one for TV shows. TV shows, we want to leave the, the language as is. Next, browse for the media again. We're going to go now and select TV shows and add. That's going to add the entire TV shows into Plex. So again, if we go back, you now see that we've got movies and TV shows. Okay. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is you'll see that there's some different library types. You can add any of these types to any of your media uh, media folders where you have all your movies and TV shows. You could potentially go to TV shows and say, well, I want to use the media, the movies library. Well, you're not going to be able to get the information that you need because it's, it's going out to the internet to like a database where it's going to download all that information. So try to select the category that best represents the sort of content that that folder will have. If it's music, put the music one. If it's photos, put photos. If it's home videos, put home videos. Because what can happen is if you have, say, for example, home videos and you select TV shows, it's going to go out and it's going to interpret the names of whatever you've named your home videos and maybe download some information that you don't need. It's going to go and say, oh, look, Jimmy's first day at the, at the beach may actually be a TV show out there, for example, and it'll go and download that information. So just be, be mindful of what library type you select. So my next one, let's do home videos. Home videos. Next, browse. Okay, and into Plex, and I've got home videos in here. Taking a while because there's a lot of stuff in there. And add, and add. All right. So that will now scan that library, and it won't attach anything directly to it. Like it won't attach, um, you know, as you can see, it's downloaded all this nice cover artwork. These are all movies that I that I own, which I've ripped. Um, you'll see it's, it's downloaded all the cover up very nicely, which is great. Um, if it's the home movies one, it's, it's not gonna download any covers because it doesn't know about them. So the cool thing about this is that can go into, say the Aliens film, right? It tells me a bit of information, a summary, you know, that sort of stuff, which is very cool. If I go back into TV shows, Okay, well, TV shows is still going. That's fine, not a problem. It's because you, the movies one is still going through and downloading. And you can tell that it's doing that because that's the only one that's spinning and that has some activity. You'll see down the bottom what it's doing. You'll see a summary occasionally pop up and it'll say downloading metadata, which is essentially all of this information, right? The cast, the director, all this stuff, you know, the length, everything, that's all considered metadata for the, your Plex. All right, that is the basic steps for setting up Plex. Uh, very, very easy. The next step then would be to go and download the Plex application itself. So this is the app that is going to be able to play this content. You can 
from the media server itself, you can you can go ahead and play and it'll start playing the movie straight from here. But there is a much nicer player available for Plex that does it a lot better. Now, as I mentioned before, if you do have a whole bunch of media, so if you've got, you know, uh, not a whole bunch of media, a whole bunch of devices, say for example, an iPhone or an iPad, you can download the Plex app off the App Store. And if it's on the same network, in this case, it's if it's on the same Wi-Fi network, it'll automatically find your Plex server and you'll be able to go and navigate through that quite easily. So we're going to go through the steps on how to install the Plex agent or the Plex um, application on your Mac. Uh, again, um, you can do this on your iPhone, for example, on your iPad. So you can actually go and purchase the, the Plex app for your iOS device. You can also install it for free on your Windows, on your Mac, on your Apple TV as well. All right. So again, we want to go into downloads here. And we want to say get an app. So this is plex.tv is the website. And go to get an app. Please sign in to access the Plex pass releases. We're not going to worry about it for now, but I would recommend doing it. So the application version is available on all these devices, which is fantastic. Um, and then you've got the home theater version, which is available for Windows and Mac. Essentially, it's a similar app. Um, the one that's for your Mac or for your Windows is a little bit prettier, but um, it's fantastic uh, compared to, you know, some of these are fantastic compared to the home theater. So we're going to say Mac and Snow Leopard or newer is the download. So we're obviously running El Capitan. So go ahead and select download. We're going to download the 64-bit edition. That is now going to start to download it automatically. And once it's done, just go ahead and open it up, which is the home theater. It should be wherever on your desktop or in your downloads folder. We want to say, yep, okay, we want to open it. And now we're going to be presented uh, with essentially what we've just been setting up. So it's automatically gone and found that I'm running the Plex server on this Mac. It's, a, it's obviously quite easy in this case because it's running on my um, on the on the on the device itself, so there's no need to, um, you know, tell it to talk to the network. But if you're running on a different device, say on an iPhone or an iPad, you download the app off there. If as long as it's on the same um, network, on the same LAN or on the same wireless, it'll go ahead and pick it up. And then you just navigate down to all right movies. All right, and I've got all my movies just here, so I can go ahead and click the movie and press play and that will now start playing that movie directly from my storage device nice and easy so that is the steps on how to configure plex i hope you found this helpful if you did give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for a whole bunch of more technical videos thanks for watching